Robots are everywhere these days. From human level robots to OmniOS and Earth 2.0, we're having a look at what's going on in the mechanical world. Hello everyone! Welcome back to our channel, a platform where you can get all the latest updates and news about a large spectrum of science, technology, entertainment, and whatnot. So hurry up and subscribe to the channel to get the regular dose of awesomeness from us. Stick out to the end and get your possible favorite robot news. With that being said, let's begin with the first news. In 1999, Jordi Rose confounded D-Wave Systems, a quantum computer firm. Sanctuary Rose's newest endeavor has raised $58.5 million in a funding round headed by Bell, Evoc Innovations, Export Development, Canada, Magna, SC Health, Verizon Ventures, and Workday Ventures to develop the world's first general-purpose robots with human-like intelligence. Rose claims that a mix of breakthrough technology in AI cognition, computer vision, machine learning, theoretical physics, and quantum computing will help Sanctuary realize its ambitious vision, robots that mimic the different subsystems in a person's brain, to break down work into manageable chunks. However, naysayers abound, including Richard Soker, the former Salesforce top AI scientist. Most startups succeed because they concentrate on a certain niche before expanding. With the amount of money, developing general AI with the correct software and hardware will be extremely challenging. Most likely, Sanctuary will have to go more particular in their application, make their innovation concrete, produce something tangible that can be sold into a single market, and genuinely address a problem. Soka, who is now the CEO a web search platform, U.com, told VentureBeat via email, it's unlikely that AGI and a generally useful humanoid robot will be the answer. Rose joins a long list of entrepreneurs and scholars who have promised AGI in robot form, but have yet to deliver. Similarly, SpaceX and Tesla CEO Elon Musk hailed a general-purpose robot humanoid named Tesla Bot during a press conference in August, aimed to do dangerous, monotonous, and dull duties, like manufacturing support. However, numerous AGI efforts have failed to yield results. Even after receiving $1.3 billion in financing from the European Union, a team led by Israeli neurologist Henry Makram abandoned their ambition to reverse engineer the human brain by 2019. AGI isn't physically achievable, according to luminaries like Mila founder Joshua Bengio and Facebook VP and chief AI scientist Jan Lichun. Putting practicality aside, AGI might be excessive for some of Sanctuary's goals. As Soker points out, Aeolus, a gigantic humanoid janitorial robot capable of inflicting great injury on anyone who stands in its way, takes a whole minute to pick up a toy animal and place it in a nearby trash. Covariant, situated in Berkeley, California, claims to have developed a special purpose system capable of choosing and packing 10,000 different kinds of products with 99% accuracy, and has received funding from Yan Li Chun and others. Beyond completion, many of the difficulties listed in Sanctuary's press statements can be addressed by robots. For more than a decade, robots have been employed to detonate landmines, and during the pandemic, machines were widely used to sterilize not only hospitals, but also offices and public spaces. Robots for space research are also not new. Algorithms have always felt at home in the digital realm, where they are trained and evolved in flawless mimicked surroundings. Deep Learning's current wave promotes AI's transition from the digital to the physical world. From industry to agriculture, the possibilities are boundless, yet there are still obstacles to overcome. Deep Learning is old hat among traditional AI experts. Alex Krzyzewski's AlexNet algorithm, which is the hallmark of deep learning technology, made a breakthrough in 2012 when it successfully deployed convolutional neural networks for the first time. Computers can now see, hear, and communicate thanks to neural networks. We can talk to our phones and dictate emails to our PCs because of DL. DL algorithms, on the other hand, have always played a role in the digital world's safe simulated environment. Deep learning is being introduced to our physical, three-dimensional environment by pioneer AI researchers. Yes, this is the actual world. Whether you're a car manufacturer, a chip maker, or a farmer, deep learning has a lot of potential to improve your business. Despite advancements in technology, the transition from the digital to real world has proven to be more difficult than many anticipated. This is why, despite the fact that we've been talking about smart refrigerators handling our grocery shopping for years, no one has one yet. 
There are multiple challenges to overcome when algorithms leave their comfy digital nests and are forced to fend for themselves in three very real and raw dimensions. Algorithms in the digital realm can get away with accuracies of roughly 80%. In the actual world, that isn't quite enough. According to the United States Census Bureau, 28 million Americans did not have health insurance at any point during the year when COVID-19 began in 2020. Even if many Americans have health insurance, it frequently does not cover everything they require, such as mental health care and follow-up breast cancer screenings, which are not always covered. This is where artificial intelligence can help to deliver more affordable healthcare solutions. Investors are paying particular attention to companies like Vara and Paradromics that are already striving to improve access, affordability, and ultimately, healthcare outcomes. AI could help tackle this accessibility issue, especially given that aging populations are a huge trend throughout developing and developed countries, said Lu Zhang, founder of Fusion Fund, a venture financing firm that backs every stage firms like Paradromics. The major goal is to have a better understanding of the disease's underlying causes and to develop a highly tailored diagnostic and treatment approach. Finally, let's take a look at NVIDIA's plans for the Omniverse, Earth 2, and CPUs as the week draws to a close. Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, recently conducted another spring GTC event that gathered over 200,000 people, and he didn't succeed in buying ARM for $80 billion. He had much to show off to those in attendance at the huge event. He provided an update on NVIDIA's plans for Earth 2, a digital copy of our world that, with sufficient supercomputing simulation capabilities within the Omniverse, might allow scientists to predict climate change for our planet. The greatest technologies, such as NVIDIA's recently released graphics processing unit, Hopper, and its future central processing unit, Grade, will be required for the Earth 2 simulation. Huang was quizzed on the continued semiconductor shortage, the potential of investing in manufacturing, competitiveness with rivals, and NVIDIA's plans following the ARM deal's failure. He exuded confidence that NVIDIA's company is still thriving for the fourth fiscal quarter ending January 30th. NVIDIA recorded revenues of $7.64 billion, up 53% from the previous year. The gaming, data center, and professional visualization industry platforms all saw record quarters and years of revenue. He also discussed NVIDIA's continued commitment to the self-driving vehicle sector, which has taken longer than expected to take off. With this, I would like to end this video with the hope that you liked and enjoyed it. If you like our content, then make sure that you like our video. And do share your views and opinions with us in the comment section below. Do subscribe to the channel to receive regular videos from us. And don't forget to click the bell icon to never miss an update. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Until then, peace.